Yo, what is going on at YouTube? Let's see if my parents will know boundaries or not. If I uh, stop the video in between segments and all that stuff, my apologies. But we are here to review the 1995 American science fiction horror film directed by John Carpenter, which is a fucking shame because, my goodness, this is one of the worst movies I've watched on this channel quite fucking easily. Uh, it was written by David Hilmelstein and it has Christopher Reeve, Linda Kozlowski, Kirstie Alley, Michael Perre. Mark Hamill and Meredith Salinger, so a pretty decent cast. Like, this is not a low-budget movie. This movie doesn't suffer from a problem like that. It's got a really good team together to make it. It's just, it's one of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen in my life. We're going to quickly get through the plot and the review. I don't give a damn to talk about this thing, really, but we're going to do it for the content, guys. So the plot follows the people and animals of the sleepy coastal town of Midwich in Marin County, California, who fall asleep at a 10 a.m., blackout and regain consciousness at 4 p.m. It's like what like already you start the film and you're like what the hell is going on like this is just fucking stupid the concept is really uh, the concept's okay but uh, I, I just don't know following the blackout 10 women of childbearing age mysteriously fall pregnant um, including a virgin girl and a married woman who has not been sexually active for a year due to her husband being away for work in Tokyo so yeah these women are getting pregnant out of fucking nowhere, a girl that hasn't even had sex yet got pregnant, and so already, this whole science fiction, this very unrealistic concept forms, and if you've watched this channel long enough, most of the movies I review on the channel are actually very surreal, like they can actually happen, there's a couple exceptions, but this just takes it to the extreme, and that already makes me just not like this movie because of how fucking fake it is, like, it's the most unrealistic shit ever, and I understand, you know, if you like fantasy movies, and if you, and you like fantasy aspects, but, like, what is the point, like, I, I don't know, I want to see something, like, kind of manifest itself, almost, kind of, I, I really don't know what to say about it, but, uh, none of them seek abortions after having dreams, and all the babies are born the same night in a barn, Five boys and five girls, though the virgin's daughter is still born due to you, umbil umbilical cord asphyxia, whatever you call it. Yeah, she's a fucking virgin. She never had sex before. Like, why the fuck would she have a kid? Why the fuck would she even be able to have a kid? So I guess they turn that down immediately, and like, that's like the difference between her and all these other women is that she's a virgin. And this one is like a special fucking alien weird thing, and it kind of morphs. I I, I don't I don't care for it. I mean, the surviving children are healthy, but have pale skin, white blonde hair, cobalt eyes, and fierce intellect. Kind of see them there. Uh, you can see them on the thumbnail, what they look like. And it's like, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's just stupid. Like, you see every single one of your kids looks pretty much the fucking same. Shouldn't you be concerned? Shouldn't you want to fucking kill it or something? I, I mean, I, to be fair, like, the residents didn't know there was something wrong. But, like, uh, I don't really understand, man. However, they do not appear to possess a conscience or individual personalities. Like, they seem to just have a mob mentality and they move together. It's just, like, again, super weird. They display eerie psychic powers that can result in violent and deadly consequences whenever they experience pain or provocation. So if someone, like, pushes them, if someone threatens them, they pretty much, like, tempt them to fucking kill themselves. Which happens to a lot of the characters in the film. So the children soon... Pair off like mates, except for David, whose intended mate was the stillborn girl. So, yeah, there are ten children, nine of them are left, and David is like this special kid. He's like this kid that's like stowed off to the side by this group of children. So, as a result, David is the outcast of the group, of course. So, although he retains some degree of psychic powers, he also has the ability to show human compassion, which is something they're very concerned about, like the group of kids. Like, they don't want someone showing, like in their little clan, cult, whatever the hell you want to call it in their little group here, they don't want anyone showing human emotions, and he does, and they, like, really don't like him for that, they don't really accept him for that, which is fucking retarded, like, in, like, their outlook as fucking children, it, like, just doesn't even make sense, like, he talks to his mother, <laughs> I'm just laughing thinking about this fucking movie, man. He talks to his mother, Jill McGowan, the school principal, and begins to understand his situation. Like, yeah, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking loser, pretty much, is what, he, what, he, what he's thinking. So the children's leader is Mara, the daughter of the physician, Dr. Allen, and his wife, Barbara, which to an extent is the main character, like him and Barbara. And I mean, they're, it's so dumb that there's not even a main character to the movie. Like, usually there's a for sure protagonist. This movie, this movie doesn't even have a main character. So, like, it's fucking hopeless. Like, 
Really, like, you, you look at it on paper and you're just like, who the hell? Like, John Carpenter, are you serious right now? But, um, as a baby, Mara used her powers to force her mother to commit suicide by jumping off a cliff. And her mate is Robert, some fucking other random kid that's pretty irrelevant by the end of it. I mean, they're all kind of, sy like, synonymous with each other, so they're all pretty much fucking irrelevant. So, the children, who out now have a bad reputation in town, eventually move to the local barn as their classroom for survival. For their own survival? No, you should be moving there because you're a fucking threat to society. That's what I was interpreting it as, but whatever. So, local priest Father George attempts to shoot them. Only for Mara to use her powers and force George to shoot himself. It's like, ugh. And then people just, like, it's just the stupid attempts that people are just, like, trying to go after these kids and fucking kill them. Alright, are you fucking dumb? Like, you're not gonna get that done. So, soon, it is learned that there are other colonies of blackout children in foreign countries. But due to their inhuman, inhuman nature, they were quickly eliminated. In some cases, at the cost of destroying the entire town. So they wiped out the entire fucking town, some of these kids, before they got killed. It's like, alright, whatever. So I guess, like, they're gonna be planning to do that. So the scientific team in Midwich flees the town to escape the chaos. Oh yeah, let's, like not help do research, let's not help the, advise these people at all, let's just fucking run like a bunch of pussies, fine, so, one of the scientists, Dr. Susan Verner, who's played by, I think, uh, Allie was her name, I, oh my god, what was, what was the actress's name, I can't remember, she's a pretty popular actress, though, you would know if you saw her on screen, so, she's, she's forced to show, uh, the children the well-preserved alien corpse of David's intended mate, she secretly kept for research, like, why did you do that again, that, but, like, that kind of fucked everything up, really. Like, that kind of made it bad for the people in the town, you know? So, the children uh, uh, the children f force her to commit suicide by impaling herself. Again, this is fucking stupid. It's super foolish. An angry mob gathers to kill the children, but the town descends into chaos. It's the classic fucking most generic shit ever. The most generic fucking third act, all that shit I I've ever seen. So, Alan devises a plan to detonate a bomb inside a briefcase in the children's classroom. By th this is so dumb. By thinking of a brick wall, he is able to create a mental barrier and keep the presence of the bomb a s secret from the children. Oh my god, a brick wall. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, again, it's just like, what are we doing right now? What is this movie? What is the point? But, um, Jill begs him to spare David because he is not like the others. Okay? Um... Alan attempts to do this by asking David to leave to get his notebook from his car. It's just so stupid. Like, at this point in the film, I just stop paying attention because it's fucking foolish as hell to continue watching a movie like this. So, the children begin to suspect that Alan is hiding something. Uh, Mara's true face shows through. She breaks through Alan's defenses, revealing the bomb. Oh, I'm sending lasers through your brain to fucking kill this brick wall. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Um, so... Yeah, um, the other children look at the clock and the bomb explodes, killing everyone inside, including Alan. Jill holds Dave, David outside during the explosion. While driving, Jill tells David, and this is one of the most retarded, most, like, anticlimactic endings you will ever fucking see in a movie. She says, we'll go someplace where nobody knows who we are. Sorry about my mom interrupting at the end there. Again, no boundaries. But... It's a fucking failure. Like, getting into the review, this movie fucking stinks. This is one of the worst. Like, this is one of the first movies I've ever watched on this channel that I'm like, yeah, this movie fucking sucks. Like, there's no redeeming qualities about it. Um, it's an F. It's for sure an F movie. Like, there's no other way to put it. Um, <laughs> worst prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel ever. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, the poor decision-making from its characters, the lack of pacing. You know, Carpenter, whose batting average is, at this point in his career, was dipping dangerously low, shows no grasp of character development, plotline, or time passes. And I guess this movie was kind of made around the time where um, John Carpenter was very late in his career, and he's already done, like, Halloween and all those ones from, like, the 80s and early 90s. And he's getting, like, out of the prime of his career, and he drops, like, absolute stink bombs like this. So I guess that's the the, the kind of context needed there. Um you know, while the remake did not attempt to make Village of the Damned something that its predecessor was not, the film had mediocre dialogue and plot development. Um, you know, uh, Reeve made an earnest attempt. Uh, Kozlowski did the highest quality acting for the film. Decker was credible. 
Hamill was badly miscast. No matter how, like, every fucking factor, no matter how star-studded, how well these people acted this movie out, it doesn't matter. The fucking dialogue stunk, the plot stunk, everything stunk. It's so fucking bad. I mean, it's an excruciating bore. Not a single of one. It's lame cliches works. Not a single one of its lame cliches work at all. Um, you know... Uh, John Carpenter directs the film quite masterfully, but one must ask why he picks the dullest, most idiotic screenplay to use. Um, it's, you know, he turned down basic instinct to direct this film. At that point, one must wonder if he's out to sabotage his own fucking career. Again, more context, like, to the situation. Uh, what is Carpenter doing? Like, I'm so confused why he chose to do what he did. But, um, a trip to a village of the darn tedious. <laughs> Uh, some of the dumbest character writing to ever grace a fucking movie screen. Ever. It's it's just bad. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's a contractual assignment. Um, and, and Carpenter said he wasn't really passionate about it. Well, why the fuck would you make it then? You know? Um, he's one of his least favorite films that he's made as a director. Under fucking standably so. He probably got the... the the He probably got the script and stuff. He's like, oh, this is fucking garbage. But it's going to make me money. But yeah, this movie absolutely stinks. If you have anything positive to say about this movie, I, I'm fucking concerned for you as a movie fan. Because what are you doing? And I will never ever watch this movie again. If I ever come across a fucking DVD of this in the store, I'd probably buy it just to burn it. Well, obviously I don't think they sell these anymore because they're literally so fucking bad. And they did so bad in the box office. And critically, this is one of the worst horror movies, at least of its time. I don't know. We haven't really gotten to any shitty horror movies yet because we're only really watching iconic ones that are on, like, the Scratch It poster and stuff. Ugh, I'm not looking forward to getting past all the good ones because, like, this is one of the first, like, absolute failures of a movie I've seen on here. And I'm not fucking enthusiastic about it. I'm not thrilled about it. So, anyway, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy GZTV. Um, movie reviews coming up. I think I'm either going to be doing Roadhouse or, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I think my dad wanted to watch that, so we might, we're going to do a movie review Sunday. I'm just not really sure what movie. Uh, other content, we're listening to an album tonight, maybe doing a review tomorrow. I have to pick what album. I'm not going to do an edited one because not passionate enough about any of the artists that are dropping, but I'll still give a review of it. Um... Saturday is going to be a My Team gameplay with like the new free playoff cards. And yeah, I'm out, guys. I got to go.